Hello and welcome to the Monday Market Update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 23rd of July 2018 and the time has just gone 11.10 British summer time. Uh, essentially, the European equity markets are in the red this morning. It's been the same old story. Heightened trade tensions around the world have put a bit of pressure on European stocks. We had a mixed session in, over, in Asia overnight and that's translated into a bit of a downward, a downward move uh, in, in, in equities in both London, uh, Frankfurt and Paris. Uh, it hasn't been a major sell-off, but essentially uh, the, the story for the last number of weeks has been the same as ever. Uh, the trade rhetoric between the United States and China on one hand and the European Union on another hand and also Canada and, and Mexico on another hand has, a, a, has, a, has left traders a bit fearful that we're kind of edging closer and closer towards a full-on trade war. And seeing as the rhetoric hasn't been dialed down or no one's really backed down yet, traders are just a bit on edge. Granted, the moves we've seen haven't been too big, so it's almost like the markets are getting used to this kind of, uh, kind of constant state of fear of a potential trade war. But nonetheless, um, while, the, while the rhetoric remains tough and no one actually has rolled back or dialed back in the rhetoric as of yet, it's likely we could see pressure remaining on equity markets. Uh, turning our attention now to the week ahead. Uh, the week ahead article can be found on the news and analysis section of our website. Uh, and scrolling down, we can take a look at the highlight of the key, the key events uh, for the week ahead. So tomorrow on Tuesday, we have German and French uh, flash PMI reports. Uh, this gives an update of the kind of the state of the of the the, the two large economies in the eurozone. So keep keep, keep an eye out for this to try and gauge how de- how, 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 how well, how well uh, France and Germany their, their economies are performing. And also keep in mind the European Central Bank uh, are talking about raising interest rates to at least the back end of 2019. So any economic indicators from the eurozone will give a, try and potentially kind of gives a clue as to kind of potential future movements from the European Central Bank. Uh, as we're essentially in early season in both the US and the UK, uh, this week uh, is very much uh, corporate focused in terms of in terms uh, of the uh, uh, items to watch out for during the week. So on Wednesday we have first half figures from ITV. On Wednesday we have second quarter figures from Facebook. On Thursday we have full year figures from Sky. On, um, also on, on, uh, on Wednesday, rather, we have um, the meeting between President uh, President Juncker and uh, President President Trump. Um, the, the meeting he- head of the EU Commission, uh, President Juncker, is going to be meeting Donald Trump. Uh, this is going to be closely watched, uh, given the kind of standoff between the United States and the European Union in ter- terms of the trade war. Uh, so, in relation to that, um, traders are going to be watching out for: Are we going to have a are we, is, is either side going to back down? Essentially, uh, keeping in mind. The German uh, car manufacturing sector is probably the barometer uh, of the, the the European Union economy. So any kind of tough talk from Trump uh, could actually see additional pressure on the German market, and particularly the German car market. On Thursday, we have the European Central Bank meeting. Uh, we're not expecting any kind of major changes there, uh, any kind of changes in terms of policy. Keep an eye out for the, um, the, the statements and press conference. And like I said, the European Central Bank aren't looking to raise rates until at least the back end of 2019. So any kind of changes to their to their language uh, could get, could uh, could um, give it give a bit of a, a nudge to the euro one direction or the other. Uh, on Thursday we have second quarter figures from Amazon, and on Friday we have second quarter GDP figures from the United States. Um, turning our attention now to the FTSE 100, we'll take a look at some of the major markets. So the FTSE has been in a fairly narrow range over the last couple of weeks. Uh, obviously, we had a major rally between March and May, and ever since then, it's been broadly moving lower. Uh, and in the last few weeks, it's been sort of edging higher, but that kind of fit, that, that still fits in with the kind of, the, the kind of largely kind of downward trend since mid-May. And a downward trend is defined as a final series of lower lows and lower highs. And if you take the um, this high here, we had a lower low, we had a lower high. A lower low and still even though we've been pushing higher in recent sessions over the recent weeks we haven't really actually managed to take off the, uh, the high of mid-june yet so we do appear to be creeping higher but the volatility appears to be very remain quite low that being said uh given the fact that we've only really kind of given the fact that we're not too far away um from the high in may i would suspect that the we could see this kind of this uh this positive move over the last couple of weeks continue and if we do manage to continue we could be looking heading uh the, the mid may high so mid June high rather of 7,779, and beyond that we'd be looking up towards the 7,900 region. 
uh, any drifts to, to the downside may find some support in around this area here in around the 7565 area in around here and if you drift, drift below that we could be looking any back down toward this area here 7482 take a look now at the share market the dax so as you, as you can see here, the DAX uh, hasn't been, hasn't been in, as, in a decent shape as the FTSE 100. Uh, essentially, the kind of the fear that uh, the US could impose tariffs on US cards is still hanging over the market. As I said, there's a meeting between Juncker and Trump this week. Traders keep an eye, keeping a, a close eye on that because, as I said, one, one of the biggest uh, potential impacts uh, would be the levies on European Union cars, which obviously the German, the German economy is very heavily dependent on manufacturing. Taking a look here at the German market, uh, we're currently trading at 12,541 on the, on, the, uh, on the German market, the DAX, so we're a couple hundred points below the eternity moving average. Essentially, while we, we remain south of the eternity moving average, it's likely that the outlook is going to remain negative um, for the German market. We can see here, um, if we do manage to kind of if, if, if the, the term market does manage to kind of continue to, to drift lower, you might find some support coming to play in around the uh, 12,500 area in around here. South of that could take us back down towards this area here, the late, the late June low of uh, 12,123, and a move below that could then bring the psychological number of 12,000 into play. But if you do manage to actually take out this red line here, the utility moving average, which comes into play at 12,776, the next big uh, figure to watch out for beyond that will be the psychological important 13,000. And if you go north of that, we could be looking heading up towards the 13,200 area. Turning our attention now to what's going on over in the United States, take a look at the S&P 500. So the S&P 500 um, has, given up, has given up some of the ground, but has given up some of its gains. But, but care, but keep in mind... We have uh, just reached a multi-month high only last only last uh, week. So markets are looking, looking quite positive. Last week, uh, the S&P 500 hit a level not seen since late January. So we are talking about you know kind of six-month high. So which tells you everything you need, you need need to know about how the markets performing. We're not too far away from six-month six-month high. So this this positive outlook could look to continue on from here. If you do see any kind of moves to the downside, we may find uh, support coming to play at the, uh, the, the low of last week, uh, 2,788, or perhaps even as low down as 2,763, this area in here. But even if you drift lower, we, we could see support coming to play at the 50-day moving average, this blue line here, uh, 2,752, or perhaps even this yellow line, the 100-day moving average, which comes to play at 2,716. Moves to the upside. If you do manage to continue on this this positive this, this positive trend, which essentially been intact uh, since here, since um, the very beginning of April. So for a few months now, the market's been in a solid upward trend, higher highs and higher lows. So it's likely that the prevailing trend will continue. If you do manage to continue on higher from here, the, keep an eye off, keep an eye off for last week's high, uh, just shy of 2,817. This area here, and if we go beyond that, the next big year to keep an eye off for with this be, this area here, 2,838. And if you go north of that, the all-time highs uh, uh, at uh, 2,877 would then be coming into play. It's only if you break below this level here. Uh, which, which is 2,690. A break below that could signal for the losses. I, I could suggest that the upward trend that's been in play for a few months could be coming to an end. I'll take a look at the Dow Jones as well. It's a similar situation whereby we're not too far away from multi-month highs. So as you can see here, the rally, uh, yeah, last week's high and, the, and the, the Dow Jones didn't quite get as high as the high that we that, that we saw in uh, in early June, but nonetheless, it's still it's, while it remains north of this trend line here, uh, it's still very much uh, in upward in an upward trend, uh, and it's comfortably above the 20 moving average, which comes to play at 24,546. So if you do, if you do manage to drift a bit lower, uh, given that there's, there's negative sentiment out there in the market, equity markets, we could see the market find some, some support from the blue line here at uh, 50 moving average at 24,000. 744 or perhaps even uh, the 100 moving average which essentially coins um, which, which essentially is in the, in, the, in the same area as the 20 moving average this red line here at 24,560 moves to the upside uh, if you take off this area here 
um, 24,403, which is the, the, the kind of mid June high. The next area to keep an eye for beyond that will be 25,507. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking ending up, up, up towards 25,821. Take a look now at the gold market, which has been in a fairly solid downward trend since April. As I said, gold has been losing ground since April. We can see a classic example of a downward trend, the lower low, the lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. So it's been a classic example of a, of a downward trend. Levels that last week that were hitting gold were levels not, not seen. Uh, well, actually, it's essentially a, a one-year low uh, for, for the gold market. And if you do manage to continue, continue drive lower from here we could be looking heading back down towards 1204 any rallies in gold may run into resistance in around the in around the 1236 area or perhaps even 1250 it's only if you take off this area here say 1266 because then we actually look to actually think maybe the, the recent downward trend has come to an end uh, sticking with the commodities team let's take a look now at the uh, crude oil market so starting off taking a look with Brent crude oil it really hasn't recovered from the, from the major from the major sell-off uh, in early July. So we, we have seen the, the oil market creep, creep a bit higher. To be fair, if Brent crude oil, crude oil stays above this area here, $71 per barrel, it's likely that we could see the market remain a upward trend. But we would need to take out, we would need to kind of claw back some, some more overall before we become more confident uh, of the upward trend resuming. Uh, if you do manage to push higher from here on, on the Brent crude oil market, uh, resistance may come into play at this blue line here. The 50 moving average at 76 spot 32 and if we go beyond that we could be looking at heading up towards the kind of near the kind of 80 dollar barrel region and if we go beyond that we could be looking up towards 80 spot 89 or up, to, up as high as 81 spot 53. it's only if you have a, a sizable break below this big kind of 71 area because then we'd be looking head back down towards potentially down towards this area here at 69 69 dollars per barrel take a look now at wti WTI, WTI is in a, bit, in a better position recently. Uh, as you can see here, the WTI has actually managed to actually hold above, move above and hold above the its 50-day moving average, this blue line here. So while it remains north of 69 spot 31, the 50-day moving average, the outlook could remain positive for WTI. And a push on higher from here, could look at, at uh, heading back up towards the 71 spot 69 area, this price area here. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking at heading back up towards the 72 spot 79 area. And anything beyond that, could then point up towards the $75 per barrel area. If you do manage to actually uh, drift lower, support may be found in at the one day moving average, this yellow line here, which comes into play at 67 spot 52. And it's, it's only if you take out this, this area here, um, the, 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 these lows here, at 67 spot 06. So just anything in order to kind of 67 here, if you break below that, that could, get, could take us back down towards 65 or perhaps even as low as 63 spot 58. To finish it up now with a couple of currency pairs, look at the euro dollar first of all. So, it, it, over the last couple of uh, last, last number of weeks, it appears that this area here, uh, one spot 1510, is uh, a fairly decent support area for the euro versus the US dollar. It hasn't really made, made much headway, but at least it seems to be signs of a, a bottom uh, forming in, in this area here. Uh, we have managed in a few occasions to manage to drift push above the 50 day moving average and then drift back below it so at the moment we're just above it uh, so if you manage to hold north of the 50 moving average which comes into play uh, in around the 1 spot 1680 area uh, we could see uh, further ground be made on the euro versus the US dollar uh, if you didn't manage to creep on higher we could be looking back up towards 1 spot 1750 or the area you need to be keeping an eye for uh, in this area here 1 spot 18 uh, 1 spot 1851 this region here uh, if, we, if we clear that area, that could be a sign that we're in for, for future, uh, for, for further gains on the euro versus US dollar. And conversely, if we do manage to actually break below this area here at, about, at 1 spot 1510, it could take us back down towards 114. I'll finish things up now by looking at the pound versus the US dollar. Uh, the pound has been in a classic downward trend uh, since April versus the US dollar. In fact, 
only last only uh, last only last week only a few sessions ago on Thursday did the pound fall back to a level not seen since this area here since September 2017 so giving an indication of how much it's fallen so it's a classic example of a downward trend if you take if you drop back below uh, one spot the recent lows of one spot 29.57 we could look heading back down towards 129 or 128 uh, move to the upside, may run into resistance at this blue line here. Lower side actually at resistance here, so I'll mark it at resistance as again. So keep an eye out for uh, one spot 32.78. And if we go beyond that, then keep an eye out for this area here, the, the, the uh, early June high of one spot 34.72. Well, that's all for me this week. Thank you very much.